First, the big headline today is one we're just going to have to tell you right off the jump. You're going to find it disappointing at the very least. We are heading in the wrong direction. Erie County Executive Mark Polencar has revealed today that more people were hospitalized Monday in the county than at any other point in the last six weeks. So that's not good for hopes of reopening Erie County anytime soon. Dave McKinley is looking at how the county is doing in other benchmarks it has to meet to reopen as set forth by the governor. In order to lift his pause order, which closed the schools, shuttered most businesses, and left millions unemployed, all in the hopes of stopping the spread of the virus, the governor says an entire region must meet 12 steps in order to reopen. One is that hospitalizations for COVID-19 do not exceed 70% of available beds in a region. Speaking for Erie County only, County Executive Mark Polencar says we're in good shape to meet that marker. At the outset of the pandemic, there were nearly 4,000 beds among the 24 hospitals in west of New York, the lion's share in Erie County. An executive order for all hospitals to increase their capacity by 50% brought us to 6,000. Then another order canceling elective, elective surgeries rather emptied hospitals out further. In Erie County, when you factor in the number of people hospitalized for all ailments, it leaves us with about 1,400 available beds. And with just 258 currently hospitalized for COVID-19, accounting for 14% of available beds, it leaves us in good shape in meeting the requirement that we have 30% available for the virus. Because of this, polling cars has asked that some elective surgeries be allowed, something the governor is yet to permit, though, in case we see a surge. But there's another key marker that needs to be met, and that is 14 days of reduced hospitalizations for COVID-19. And while we were doing well, unfortunately, there's some sudden and discouraging news on that front. We'll pass that along to you tonight at 5. Dave McKinley, Channel 2 News.